All right, so onward and upward with MB2. So what we're talking about today is probably one of the most critical parts of the MP, or I shouldn't say critical, but it's foundational. It's fundamental. It's something that really underlies how the modern world of computing works, which is communication between two devices um, across a network. You know, the, the basic principles that we're going to talk about today of client-server communication are the same principles and, in fact, the same protocols, the same, you know, way in which it works that is the same way that Facebook updates your newsfeed when you use the app. It's the same way that Instagram notifies you when people like things or the way that you browse Instagram. It's the protocol that underlies your use of the World Wide Web through a browser on your phone or whatever. So. This is incredibly important to the modern world of computing. This idea that I transfer, I can transfer data across a network from one device to another. Um, so in terms of, we're going to start talking about the server and what we're doing here. So I've completed the, the load preferences part of MP2 and you should complete that first. If you don't, you're not going to make much progress here. What we're going to work on now is what's called test preferences route. I'm going to go ahead and run this, not expecting it to succeed, but I'm just getting that test warmed up so that I can uh, start to work on the code that it requires. So this is another case where we're, uh, we need to talk a little bit about what's, hi, there's a dog here, she's going to help. Uh, we need to talk a little bit about what's in server.java uh, before we start. So this is a small web server. What is a server? A server, its name implies, is something that provides information to a client. Um, and again, you know, when you talk about using Facebook, what you're actually doing is you're, interf you're interacting with Facebook's servers. When you talk about using Instagram, you're interacting with Instagram's servers. When you come to the course website from 124, you're interacting with our server, right? A server is a computer program that runs code and it communicates with the client using what's called a protocol. A protocol is a set of instructions and agreements. It's sort of like an interface, except protocols have a little bit more behavior built into them. Essentially, the protocol says, if you request something in this certain way, then the server will provide what you asked for. And the protocol indicates how the request should be made, what type of format the responses should follow, and other types of things. Um, and so we're just scratching the surface with this here. Um, but you know, this is a big topic, but it's also like so important. It's one of the reasons that I decided to build it into the machine project because I couldn't resist the chance to give you a little bit of a peek at one of the more powerful ideas in computer science, this idea that we could communicate across the globe using these simple protocols on top of this incredible piece of infrastructure called the internet that we've created. Um, okay. So let's look at our actual, uh, web server. Um, so this dispatch method is when, when a client makes a request to our server, the dispatch method is what runs and it handles each request. And this is another case where we're using a framework. And so the framework is calling the dispatch method with the information that it needs to proceed. And what we get past to this method, this is sort of a callback essentially. And it's another case where we don't know when it's going to run because we don't know when clients are going to call it. And so what we're providing, uh, is a method and then the framework will call this method to figure out what to do with a request. What we see here is that we're past the request and the request contains a bunch of information about what the client is asking for. And we use that information to figure out what to do. Now, most of the, most of this code here, you should read through a little bit. You can certainly ask questions about, uh, but you shouldn't need to modify this. What we have starting on line 86 though, is what's called a dispatch tree. And essentially what this starts to do is make a decision about what to do with the request based on what's called the URL or the path. Now, this is something that you can see in action when you browse the web. When you go to different websites, you'll see that that address in, this, in your location bar is changing. That is information that you are providing to the web server that it uses to figure out what you want. So if you go to a different page, you're making a different request. The server uses that path to determine what information it should send to your browser. Now, what we've provided you with here is something that's known as a web API. It's not providing a web page. It's not providing something that you would load up in a browser. What it's doing is it's providing data. 
there's already a route here that we've established for restaurants. And this is something, this is another case where we're asking you to mimic existing code. The code we provided already supports a route for restaurants. That route is at slash restaurants. So if you went to youraPIserver.com slash restaurants, what you would get back is a JSON array containing JSON objects with all the information about the restaurants that the server knows about. So your app is already retrieving that information from the server. If this was a more normal system, the server would run somewhere else. The server would run like in a web server somewhere, right? So again, think about Facebook, Instagram, Google, whatever. They rent uh, computers all over the world where their servers run. Um, and a lot of times they actually, there are these uh, server farms, data centers that they'll rent uh, servers in because it turns out that it's actually kind of slow to send requests all the way even to just to California. So when you communicate with Facebook, you're probably communicating with the server like located somewhere in the Chicagoland area or somewhere closer to where you are. Um, in this case, what we've done is we put all the code in one place so that you can both modify the server and the client, which we're both going to do in this lesson. So here's the code, here's how we respond to, and, and okay, so here's the requests include both a path, there's actually a lot of information that comes in with the request, but the two pieces of information that we're gonna focus on are the, are the path and the request type. So a get request is, is part of the HTTP protocol. It specifies a way for the client to request data from the server. This is by far the most common type of HTTP request that is made as you interact with the internet. Most of the requests that you make when you browse the web are get requests. You're asking for information. There's also a way to send information to the server. And sometimes you do that like when you buy something, you need to send your credit card information or whatever, so you fill in the form. And there's another type of request that we're actually probably not gonna work with um, that allows the client to transmit information to the server. But for the purposes of this project, we're gonna deal with mostly get requests because what's happening is the client is requesting information from the server. So we've already set up a way for the client to request information about restaurants. So how does this work? So if the client makes a get request to this path, what happens is the get restaurants method gets called. And if I look at what get restaurants does, it returns what's called a mock response. And this is an HTTP response. It sets a code on that response to indicate that this request completed successfully. It sets the body of the response to the JSON that it loaded. And you'll see where does this happen. So this JSON string gets loaded in the server startup code. Okay. So, you know, as we're going, you probably want to make notes of like things that you need to now that you've downloaded preferences, you have a way to get a preferences JSON string. So when is that going to get loaded, right? Might, might be a good place to do it, kind of in the same place as you load the restaurants JSON. Um, what's the name of the path that we're going to respond to, which in this case is going to be slash preferences. If we look at our test case, you'll see that it makes a request for the preferences route. Um, and then what do we do? And what you can do is something very, very similar to what's being done in Git restaurants. You create a response, you set the request code to indicate that things are okay. You set the body of the response. So the body is the information that actually sent back to the client. You sent that to be the preferences JSON uh, that you loaded out of that file and transformed from the CSV. And then what is this? So this is a header. A header is another part of the HTTP protocol that sort of allows you to add sort of metadata to the response. And in this case, what the header does is it tells the client that what's contained in the body is JSON. And then it also sets the what's called the character set. This is the character set that's used when I parse the, the, the JSON. Um, so this is another, you know, one of the many places on MP2 where we're gonna show you code. Um, in this case, we're showing you this spot in the in the routing tree, right? Where I make a decision based on the path, okay? Um, you're gonna be working with a different path, but you can use a very similar approach. There's a place down here where, where to go, right? Where I load the, the preferences, the, the restaurant JSON um, using my load restaurants method. We just wrote a method called load preferences. I probably want to do something similar. And then there is a method up here that gets called, called get restaurants that gets called 
by the routing tree, sorry, I'm jumping around here, um, in response to a correctly formatted, uh, formulated request. Now, just since we're here, let me show you a couple of other fun things, right? So for example, some of you might have seen a, a 404 error when you're browsing the web, like you, you, uh, somebody gives you a URL and you try it, and instead of the page, you get something called HTTP 404, or sometimes it's a very ugly page. What is that, right? Well, HTTP 404, that's, a, that's part of the HTTP protocol. That's an error code that indicates that the server doesn't know, essentially the server says, you asked me for something that I don't have. So for example, if I ask for restaurants and then I add, add a few more S's here, what I'm gonna get back is a 404. The server is saying, I don't have that document. I don't know how to respond to that request, right? So this is maybe a, a place where you can connect some of what you ex have experienced in your own real life of using the internet with you know, uh, an actual protocol that's in use that you're starting to learn a little bit about. So there's a lot more that we can say about this, but it turns out that just this ability to move data from one place in the world to another place in the world is incredibly powerful all by itself. And you can actually build a lot of really cool things and deploy them just using uh, these basic sort of uh, client server principles. So first step for this checkpoint or this test case, there's actually two test cases as part of this lesson, is get the server to work. So we've given you a model with the, the restaurants route. What you need to do is mimic that code to add a route so that you return the preferences JSON that you parsed on load preferences. So you can do this by following along with the code that's already there, making a few small changes to server.java that are based on code that already exists. Once you finish this, you'll be ready to move on to the next part of today's lesson.